Hello guys. Do you know why your maze has not been bought? Maybe you know, but it's also likely that you have not put much emphasis on it. And the reason why you always farm, especially to the farmers, why you always farm, and then when it gets to the time that you want to sell your crops or you want to sell your produce, you don't get it. You don't get buyers to you know to buy it. Okay. Now in this video, I'm going to explain to you from the perspective of maize buyer, from the perspective of, of someone who buys maize. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this video is that as much as possible, I want to see the gap between farming, maize farming, and maize buying. Okay, the gap between it, I want to see it breathe as much as possible. Okay, so I'm going to give you the perspective of somebody who buys maize. All right, so if you are someone who is a farmer, who is a maize farmer, and you always, but you always, you always make it uh, produce your meat. You don't get it, um, but from time to time, year after year, and you don't know what it, what is causing it. I'm going to show you here, right here, right now. So stick and uh, watch this video till the end. And at the end of this video, you will know you have all the answers that you be you always wanted to hear. All right, my name is Yawa This is Ashko TV, the official YouTube channel for Asia House Commodities. And remember, I said that commodities is a maize trading entity. We have taken our time over the past five, ten years to study the maize markets of Africa, of Ghana, and the maize trading trends in Ghana. And we have maize, a lot of maize in stock. All right. So, should you be a poultry farmer? Should you be an animal feed producer? Should you be a maize production company in Ghana who need maize in large quantities? We are talking about thousands of bags. Speak with us, and we will sort you out. All right. So, what you should know as a maize farmer is that every user of maize, every maize user has standards. Every maize user has standards. Now, talking about me as a maize buyer, I should have also have standards. And my standards are going to be based on the standards of the people I'm going to sell to. Okay. The people that I'm going to sell my my maize to after production, right? Because after I have bought it from the farmers, uh, I need to dry it to the specifications of my, you know, my buyers also, right? So what does this mean? What it means is that if I'm coming to you as a farmer to get maize or to buy maize, I cannot buy just any maize from you. I can't buy just any maize from you. I have to make sure that the maize that I'm buying from you is something that will not give me problems. Because believe you me, I have bought maize from farmers, processed it, supplied it, and got it rejected. Okay, so when it happens like this, what it, what it is telling me is that I'm buying, you know, discussions with my buyers also, I get the for the reason uh, for which you know my, my my goods were rejected of course not like to see something like that over and over again if i send some um, if i send stocks to a buyer and they get rejected of course there is the reason why they got rejected right and the reason most most of the time is that it didn't meet their specifications their standards okay and for that reason they will reject it all right now me as a business as a businessman also if i'm going to buy the maize from you the farmer i'll make sure that the maize that i'm buying from you is meeting my standards too all right so now that we are talking about standardization and the standard quality standards for that matter of maize let me mention some of them few of them all right, so we are talking about the moisture of the maize. We are talking about the color of the maize. Even though we have yellow corn, we have white corn. If it is white corn, it should be white. White corn should not be looking like brown or yellow. And yellow corn shouldn't be looking like black. All right, what this means that it has been infected by something. 
All right, so we are talking about the moisture content. We're also talking about the, the color of the maize. We are talking about the amount of waste that is in the maize. All right, so these are general standards that we should we look at as buyers, as maize buyers. These are general standards that we look at. Okay, now, you might want to ask me that you as the farmer, how does this really concern you? Because you are not the buyer, you are not a buyer of maize. It should concern you because if you have maize that looks, that lacks this quality standards that I just mentioned, the buyers are not going to buy them. Okay, if you have maize that is well dried, that is that is free from waste, and it is also free from weevil infestation. That is one thing also that I did not mention. Okay, so number four of the specifications and standards will, will be weevil infestation and also powder formation or formation of powder in the maize. Okay, so these are like the five things. And the formation of powder oh, most of the times comes from weevil infestation. All right, because the weevil, as they destroy the maize, they turn it into powder. All right, so that's like two in one right there. Okay, so fast forward. So fast forward, what I was saying is that as you have maize, as you're a maize farmer and you want your maize to be bought, there is no way you, you can have maize that and it will not be bought or you will not get buyers to buy it if one your maize is clean if your maize is free from weevil infestation and powder formation and if your maize is also free from waste and your maize is also free from callus or different callus there is no way that this maize will not be bought because the amount of maize we produce here in the country is not even enough for the uses of the maize. So at every point, maize is required in the system. Okay, so if you have maize and it, it, it is not being bought, you're looking for buyers, you're not getting, it's more likely that you are having some of these, you know, issues that I just mentioned. Okay, so a very typical example, just yesterday, I visited the farmer who said he want, he has maize himself. Okay. And upon the deli deliberation, it has passed. The, the, the farmer was having two types of maize that he has grouped. Two types of maize. Okay. Now, one type is the first crop. Now, in general, and the, the farmer is still having the first crop with him. He has stored the first crop till January. Sometimes I ask myself why you have you know, store first crop till January. For me, it doesn't make sense to me, but the farmer might have their reasons. Farmers have their reasons. Everybody have their reasons for, 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 for being those stars, right? Now, the, the group of maize that was um, the first crop it had challenges, and most of these challenges are those ones that I've mentioned about. Even though it passed the moisture content, okay, it passed the moisture content, there was less moisture in it. It was around 11%, which is fantastic, okay, but it had changed color because it had been in the sack for a very long time, okay, probably it was sun dry. It, the, the farmer depended on the sack, on the sun for drying, and because of that, the color was very bad. Now, the second one, the second reason was that it was also also having weevil infection. Okay, so weevil infestation. So we will have infested it and has caused it to be to develop powder in it. All right. So because of that, this means by my specification, which also transcends to me that the specification of my bias, I cannot buy it. All right. Just imagine that if this farmer really needs money at that time. What is he going to do? He's going to fall for, he's probably going to fall for low price. Because if somebody wants to sell and the farmer is desperate, what will happen? Somebody wants to buy. The person is, of course, coming to say, oh, this means it doesn't meet 
um, specifications and standards. So I'm going, to, I'm going to, you know, give you any price that I want. And if you are the, the farmer is, you know, um, desperately in need of cash, you just, you know, buy into low pricing. Okay. But for the other group, which is um, the second season or the minor season, what happened was that it was so clean. It was clean. The moisture was around 12, 12.5 13, which is normal. All right, because 12.5 13 is, is, is good for the second crop. Some right 12.5 13 percent. It's perfect, right? So at the end of the day, for somebody like me, I only opted to buy the second crop because that one is freshly harvested. And it is not having weevil infestation. It is not, there's no powder in it. There is no waste. There's a little waste, but as a processor, I'm going to know, I'm going to know how to reduce the waste, right? By cleaning it, of course. So that wasn't so much of a problem. But my problem is that sometimes farmers keep maize for far too long. Okay. Now, if you want to keep it for too long, of course, for reasons being for obvious reasons being that you want to have better pricing, make sure you treat it well. I'm sure you have seen the videos. I'm going to attach the video where I, I, um, I taught about how to keep your maze for a very long time. Follow those processes if you want to keep it for a very long time. And then avoid all these things, okay? But I can assure you that no matter the amount of maize you have, whenever you want to sell it, there are people ready to buy it. Just keep it in good shape, and I tell you, you'll be able to you know you'll be able to get the best price out there in the in the market. All right. Now, I've always said on this channel that one of the reasons that you know propel us to do to give out this information is that we always want to hear want to hear the good stories in the agri business. All right. So starting from, if you have been falling victim to all these issues, starting from this season, this May season, I want to play with you as, as farmers to take some of these things into consideration. Make use of this information, this free information. Make use of it and then have good stories to tell at the end of the day. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Yawa Simpson Chiro once again. If you have questions, if you have comments, Put them in the comment section, like this video, this video, and share it with your friends and family. Alright, and until we meet in the next one, bye bye for now.